www.ocala.ca Ocala. Six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Nice looking morning. Yeah, it's gorgeous. The best way to introduce you to our next guest is to read the full um, the, the full title of the book we're about to talk about, including the subtitle. And the subtitle, I think, is what I want to focus on because it'll make you say, what? Did I see that word right? Did they print it right? Uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan is the author of the book we're going to talk about. She's on the phone. She is board certified in psychiatry, psychosomatic medicine, and integrative holistic medicine. The book is called A Mind of Your Own. Now, here's the subtitle. This is where I want you to pay attention. The truth about depression and how women can heal their bodies to reclaim their lives. The word that jumped out at me as being... Wait, maybe she means their minds, how women can heal their minds to reclaim their lives. Maybe that's what she meant. No, she means bodies. All these antidepressants, it turns out, may be doing you more harm than good. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, right? That's what I'm getting out of this. We're going to get the details right now. Dr. Kelly Brogan, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Great to be here. Where are you calling from? I'm in my office on Madison Avenue in Manhattan. All right. It, you didn't get any of that snow, did you, that Boston is getting, did you? Uh, it's, it's a relentless experience, winter in New York. No. We get you, a little bit. We you, got a little bit. You did. Oh, okay. Okay. I was just looking. I, I go to the Times Square cam now, now and then just to see. <laughs> just to remind yourself that you're somewhere better. Just right? keep checking on you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so t uh, tell me, right, did, did I focus on the right word there in the, in the uh, subtitle? How women can heal their bodies to reclaim their lives. The word bodies should strike people as an unusual choice of words because most people think it's your mind that needs to be fixed if you're depressed, right? That's right. We're really taught, uh, you know, a story about depression that if you just scratch beneath the surface is actually really a myth. And, and I learned this over about, you know, 10 years of research that was really triggered by my own uh, ability to put into remission a chronic autoimmune disease that I developed postpartum. You know, I learned in medical school, you're not able to do that. You know, once you, once you have an autoimmune disease, you have it for life. And so it really inspired me to begin looking into everything I didn't learn about in medical school. And what I found out was that, you know, what we're calling depression and what we're told is an inherited, maybe even genetic, chemical imbalance right, in the brain. Right, right, right. Right. It, it, we're really taught that by pharmaceutical companies who, in this country and only one other country on the planet, have the ability to speak directly to patients. You know, it's called direct-to-consumer advertising. So they've really sort of, you know, attached to this idea that, that depression is a chemical imbalance. But unfortunately, you know, if you look into the literature in six decades, there is not a single study that validates that. And believe me, they've wow. been looking. They, you know, they've been cutting up brains. They've been checking wow. urine levels and urine. And there's no consistent finding that actually validates this idea to the extent that even conventional, you know, psychiatry is beginning to say, okay, let's move beyond the monoamine. It's called the monoamine hypothesis, like to, to another theory theory of depression because the outcomes aren't so hot, like these medications really don't work well, they're over-prescribed, and what I really unearthed was, you know, they're actually quite dangerous in ways that patients are not informed about up front. And so what I started to learn through my own, again, healing experience was that there are a lot of things, you know, that can be wrong with the body that are simple to reverse. And we call them depression. We call it panic attacks. We call it anxiety. You know, when, when patients are struggling with blood sugar imbalance, for example, this is a highly reversible, even in a couple of weeks, highly reversible problem, but they can get put on an antidepressant for panic disorder for life if no one's looking. You know, wow. My, yeah. And doesn't this fly in the face of what many people who are in, in the psychiatry have been teaching. I, mean, I guess you've already established that. You know who I hear shouting for joy right now is the Scientologists. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so, 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 let me, so let's. I just want to talk to them. I mean, talk to them just for a second. Are, are you, or, or maybe, well, this is what I want to know. Does this apply to everybody, or are are some cases the the antidepressants 
appropriate and other cases not is that the is that the bottom line well i i believe in the physician's oath right first do no harm and in my opinion the first line of investigation when you are experiencing depression and again this also goes for other mental illnesses because people often ask me that question but we'll just focus on depression the first line of inquiry has to be do i have a thyroid condition am i b12 deficient am i having a specific reaction to a common processed food you know do I have blood sugar instability? These are the questions that must be asked first because if you don't ask them up front, then it's almost like, you know, I say taking a Tylenol for a shard of glass in your foot. It's, it's absolutely sidestepping what could be a very reversible problem and it would be no big deal if these medications, you know, were safe. But in fact, you know, but within a couple of doses, yeah, you know, we have, we have, you know, men who are murdering their two daughters a couple of doses into taking Zoloft. You know, this is serious business, and it's, you know, these are, they're handed out by internists, you know, like Skittles, and it's okay, not because right. they're bad people. <laughs> you know, they want to help their patients, and we're taught in medical school that this is how you help patients in distress, but we're not taught that actually depression is a symptom. It's not a disease the way we're thinking of these other, you know, disease entities like, you know, diabetes. Why is, why is the book aimed at women? Uh, it just happens. <laughs> I get this question all the time. Uh, well, because I, because you just mentioned the man. Yes. T- yeah, it, it, it's it's so true. It's not. You know, the truth is the material in it is completely gender neutral. In fact, anyone from, you know, a teenager to, to an elderly male, you know, could benefit, in my opinion, from these tenets. I am specialized in women's health. My fellowship was in what's called reproductive psychiatry. I see women in my practice. And I do believe that the, the diet is particularly tailored, um, you know, uh, to, to, to women in terms of inclusion of starchy vegetables, for example. Um, it happens to be the diet well, I recovered with, but it's really largely a template for beginning this journey no matter what demographic you are. But, but, but I mean, if you were to study, and I'm sure you have, <laughs> uh, the, the, the chemical differences, hormonal differences between yes. men and women, it, it would only make sense, therefore, that if, if I'm depressed to the extent that I need a medication or, or perhaps might need one, that the medicine might need to be different than if, than if Robin was. And Robin, mm-hmm. don't ever get depressed. I don't want you to get depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, this is true. And the more complex, high-level interventions from a holistic perspective might be different, but the initiatory program really would be pretty much the same. And all that we're doing is top-down interventions that have very complex you know, effects, right? We don't understand why and how food speaks to our genes. We just know that it does. I know my food speaks to my genes. (laughs) Well, hopefully it's having the right conversation, right? In your Uh, control, that's the whole point. uh, Don't you think, though, that sometimes um, things are diagnosed incorrectly, like I think ADHD sometimes is diagnosed incorrectly, and then you have the parents that give their children Ritalin so they can, you know, like, well, sure. You know, all, so all that a- time, I hate it? that. What is ADHD? No one can tell you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a, a checklist a subjective checklist of descriptor, you know, descriptive terms. This is not a disease, right? And, and, and so what we're dealing with is labeling a lot of how um, and why we have strayed from what our body and our genes have expected to see over two and a half million years of evolution. We are labeling that mismatch with our lifestyles as psychiatric illness. Mm-hmm. But, you know, nobody in the, in, no conventional psychiatrist could actually tell you what ADHD is. But, but the, All it is is a behavioral mismatch. But aren't there people who have been diagnosed with ADHD, who have been prescribed medications, who swear that those medications are helping them? I love this question. I get it every time I lecture around the world is, no, what are you talking about? These medications have saved my life, right? And I don't doubt that there are, you know, these are chemicals, right? So they're chemicals that are really, in my opinion, no different from any other chemical substance. So let's talk about one you may be familiar with, right? So what about alcohol? So if you're a very anxious person and you take two shots of vodka before you head over to a party that you were really nervous about, guess what? You might feel a lot better. Your symptoms might be abated, right? Does that mean that you have an alcohol deficiency (laughs) that you genetically inherited? No, it means that the chemical effect is something that you happen to like. And of course, we all know that it comes at quite a cost, right? So I want to reframe what we are calling therapeutic interventions as actually chemicals that are having an effect. And it may very well be 
that the effect is adaptive for a short or long period of time. But the data suggests that actually the cost of that chemical effect in the long term is such that there is no long term benefit. In fact, people do worse, whether it's stimulants or antidepressants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. Robert Whitaker is an investigative journalist who has established that people do worse long term when they are treated versus hmm. when they aren't. So we have to look at those facts. Talk there, Kelly Brogan is our guest. So far, we are so intrigued, aren't we? The, oh, the, yeah. the book is going to tell you the rest of it, but we have about another 12 minutes when we come back from the break. The book is called A Mind of Your Own. We'll be back with Dr. Kelly Brogan after the break. Dr. Brogan, just hang in there a little bit and uh, we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunny to partly cloudy today. Brisk and cooler with high of 63 to 66. Clear and moonlit tonight. Also chilly with a low of 37 to 50. Tomorrow will turn warmer, mostly sunny with a high of 71 to 75. Looks beautiful Wednesday. Sunshine and high of 77 to 81. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Cookies, 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 cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. When you want something special and fun for any occasion, get cookies. King Cookie in the Paddock Mall in Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. So next time you're in the mall, stop by King Cookie or call 352-237-2557. KingCookieOcala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Cookies! Ocala's Got Talent. Happening in May, but if you want to get in on the running, you need to apply. The dates are March 12th, 19th, and 26th from 10 to 6 p.m. each day. And the location is at Mojo's on Southwest 17th Street. Do you have what it takes to shine and stand out in what you do? Well, there's only one first place winner for Ocala's Got Talent, and it could be you. Audition fee is just $25, and spectator fee is 5 This helps the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch. Questions call 352-595-7100. Plans for lunch Sunday? Moms and dads have a quality time lunch date with your little one. Honey Baked Ham and Cafe is going to help. Each Sunday through Mother's Day, bring your child under 10 to Honey Baked Ham at 2709 Southwest 27th Avenue in Ocala between Best Buy and Regal Cinema. Your child's meal is free with paying adults. Eat it only. Honey Baked Ham and Cafe serves only the highest quality food and provides a clean, quiet environment so you can enjoy your time together. For more information, call 861-0011. 18 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for staying tuned with us this morning on the phone. We are talking to uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan. She has written a book called A Mind of Your Own, The Truth About Depression and How Women Can Heal Their Bodies to Reclaim Their Lives. In the uh, material that was sent to me so I could sound like I was intelligent, uh, it's, it says, and I will read it, depression is not a disease, it's a symptom. Recent years have been a sh have seen a shocking increase in antidepressant use the world over, with one in four women starting their day with medication. And it goes on to say it's a cure-all for everything, from panic attacks to grief to irritability to insomnia to everything to stress. And I, I, I think I've always felt this, but I'm not a doctor. I've always felt you know what I always feel when somebody's depressed. I would say, hey, "Come on, hang out with me. I'll cheer you up. I, I can do that." And and everybody else would say, "Ah, oh, you, you you're simplifying it. You don't understand what it's all about." Yes. No, it, it ab absolutely is the case that this can be a debilitating uh, symptom, and there's, there's no question about that. You know, the, the truth is that its seriousness um, gives us a, a, you know, a feeling of desperation often, and particularly as patients. You know, they want a quick fix, and they want it immediately. Uh, the trouble is that, you know, it doesn't exist. There is no, there's no free lunch with pharma is sort of, you know, of what I've come to believe. And that what we are thinking of as a quick fix is really anything but. Because even if you go to a conventional psychiatrist and you're prescribed Zoloft, let's say, they will tell you what we're taught in residency, which is, oh, it takes about six to eight weeks to, quote, unquote, work. Oh, right? really? Six oh, wow. Eight weeks. Oh, wow. So what I'm offering, you know, in, in, in this program is, is a one month. Give me one month. <laughs> you know, of, of uh, a transformation of your day-to-day -day lifestyle that is going to have potentially so many side benefits and that we can't even quantify them, right? So there's no risks and potentially many, many side benefits. And the, ch the change is basically in diet? Is Am I understanding that right? That's the, no that's the number one pillar. And, you know, listen, I, um, I don't mess around. And so I, I really want people to, to move the needle and I want them to move it as quickly as possible. So in my practice, I have a, you know, 
a very uh, I try to convey my passion for the potential for this to 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 really change right. your life in the space of a month. So uh, it's not the kind of thing that you half heartedly engage. Yet. How is how is depression measurable? Uh, th- th- let me. Th- there was a story just this morning. Can I just share a story with you about diabetes? Yeah. It says this is this is in today's. Uh, I'm sorry, it's in Friday's news. I got it this morning. But it was in Friday's news. It says. Researchers from the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania found that insulin resistance, which blocks the body's ability to effectively process sugar, is linked to high levels of certain amino acids. And it goes on to say that the only way they get into our body is just through what we eat. And therefore, they're hypothesizing. I, 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 don't, know the, the, I don't know what they're telling us not to eat. But they're, they're, uh, there's a, the, the article is implying that what we eat is causing us to have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is measurable. You can measure the amount of, yeah. right? right. How do you yeah. measure depression? How do you, how do you measure? Like if we could say, okay, this is the diet that will reduce diabetes. You give us a diet that will reduce depression. How do we measure that it's being successful? Well, there's not a great way, right? Because it is like a fever. You measure it in terms of severity. And, you know, we have a bunch of different scales. In fact, a lot of the literature that I review uses a a scale called the HAMD, which is actually the very scale that, when analyzed by researcher Irving Kirsch, was was noted to to demonstrate that there is no difference between placebo and antidepressant effect, uh, which is a very unpopular but very, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real real truth. So we don't have a good means of measuring it. Psychiatrists don't use any objective measures. You know, there's no brain scan. There's no, you know, electrical assessment. There's no blood work that actually diagnoses depression. So we're really moving into the realm of the, you know, experience of health in the modern era, which is syndromal, right? People are, they just feel like crap and they don't even know why, Mm -hmm. what it's about or who to go to for help. But people are struggling in these very common ways, right? Brain fog, fatigue, a sense of malaise, they have digestive problems, their hair is falling out, they're overweight. You know, it's a, this is a picture of dysfunction that almost always gets labeled as depression. But, you know, what we've forgotten is that our number one interface with our genes in, in the realm of what is now being called epigenetics, right? So it's, it's the power that you have every single day to influence your genetic expression so that you're not condemned to, to a life of a diagnosis, you know, from birth till death. That's an old story. We're done with that. But the new story is, is about the potential we have to use food to influence our genetic expression. And so that has relevance in, in all of the arenas you're, you're bringing up. So diabetes, cancer, mm-hmm, heart disease, mm-hmm. autoimmunity. And I'm just putting depression and mental illness into that category where I feel it belongs so that we can start to appreciate the power of food to, to heal this condition. Do, does the uh, diet that you would recommend for depression resemble a diet that might be good for health in, in general? Mm. That's a good question. You know, I am a believer that there is no one diet, right? I'm a longtime follower of a, a dentist named Weston A. Price who ran, went around the world in the early 1900s to try and answer the question, you know, why is it Americans are getting so sick and suffering from degenerative di- diseases and tooth decay when all of these indigenous populations ate totally different stuff, you know, Eskimos to Amazonians to Alpine, you know, sheep herders to, to Incans, you know, they all ate different stuff, but they weren't sick in the ways that Americans That's were interesting. Sick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't believe that there is one diet, but there are properties to every healing diet, you know, whether it's whole foods, whether it's inclusion of fermented foods, whether it's, of course, elimination of processed foods and sugar and canned things. You know, there are tenets that actually run through, you know, he postulated 11, 11 of them. So I don't believe that actually this is the diet for every single health problem. Yeah. But I do believe that it is the best start if you are struggling with the things that I enumerate in the book, which is things like depression, anxiety, hypothyroidism, you know, obviously, you know, easy um, weight gain, if you're struggling with autoimmunity, these cluster together around um, a certain type of nervous system dominance called parasympathetic dominance, um, which actually lends itself to the type of diet that is red meat inclusive, actually. It's very controversial to even admit that. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I saw that in here. Yeah, red meat inclusive diet. Um, 
and it's one that actually focuses on starchy vegetables, on red meat, on cruciferous vegetables, minimal fruit, and then nuts and seeds and eggs. So spaghetti? It's just spaghetti? Okay. Spaghetti? <laughs> Spaghetti's not on the list. Oh, it's not on the list. Oh, damn. And okay. listen, I'm, I'm half Italian, so this, and I did this diet, and believe Wait. me, in the initial mm-hmm. days it was not easy, but it's worth it. Doc, did you remember a song by Carly Simon, I Haven't Got Time for the Pain? Do you remember that? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, well, I I want to use that just to point out something. And this is the the theory I've always had, that my grandmother never seemed depressed. And maybe because she she had so many things to do, there wasn't time to be depressed. Maybe we have too much time nowadays. Mm -hmm too easy i don't know i think i think we're, we're pretty damn busy it's maybe part of the problem what we don't have time for what we don't make time for are the mm. things that we're not going to get away with so right we don't make time to eat i, I right. i'm included in that i have a 10 minute lunch break today i'll probably be doing 40 things while i'm while i'm eating right mm-hmm. we don't make time that's for, a we don't good make point time for community and for family, for being with each other. We don't make time, many That's of us, to exercise. Really good. We don't make time to, to meditate and to breathe and to reconnect with our nervous system and tell you know tell our bodies everything is cool. We don't make time to sleep. How many people do you know who give themselves five hours? You know, yeah, at the end I'm of the one of them. To get into bed? <laughs> I'm one exactly. of them. Exactly. So it's, it's more about sort of like, you know, focusing on the American way, which is get back to work, keep busy, and keep up. Yeah, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, the other shoe is dropping. And are you right that depression is an opportunity? Uh, I believe that so passionately, not only because my entire life uh, was transformed when I began my personal journey, but because I watch it every day with my patients. You know, I hold a space for them, I feel, not just for symptom resolution, but for this next chapter, right? Like, are you here just to survive, you know, get up, go to work, and go home all until you die? Like, is that going to be your story? Or are you interested in really touching down into your life purpose and your meaning? And so that's sort of my own little secret, that that's my agenda when I meet with patients. And so I have patients, once they move through the process of physical healing, who, you know, adopt babies, they come out of the closet, they move to Europe, you know, they leave their husbands. The right. major life transformations happen, and you know what? They needed to happen. And it's just that they were suppressed and ignored and neglected in the time that they were actually medicating away these symptoms just to remain functional. So, so there's a, a list of uh, recipes in the back of the book as well. I would recommend that you change the name of one of them. The, okay. The coconut crack bar might be, have a better. Oh, there you go. Might be a better name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Hey, listen, I'm trying to tell you that this actually is good, right? Uh, this is obviously one of those topics that you can't cover in a radio interview. Get the book. It's called The Mind of Your Own. If you want one that I, the one that I have, it's free. If you call me and ask for it, it's yours, 622-9622. The rest of us have to go buy it. And, uh, Doctor, can you give us a website that we can go to to buy the book? Sure, sure. So my website is kellybroganmd.com. You can read the first chapter there. Uh, and the book is otherwise available on Amazon and, and in retailers. Okay, and Brogan is B-R-O-G-A-N? Yes, M-D, and like Mary, do you like dog, yeah. And Kelly with a Y. So Kelly Brogan, M-D. Dot com and uh, call us if you need that repeated and, and easier to easier than that just go to woca.com look at the guest list for today robin puts that together and your website kelly is already there uh for for make it easier for our listeners and if you go to the video uh of this you will see the cover of the book the whole video long so make it easy for everybody dr brogan thank you for being on the air with us i truly truly agree with you and we do have a bunch of scientologists in this listening audience and they are cheering right now i know <laughs> yeah, they <Awesome>. are so <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, this was a fun conversation. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. We will take a break. Be right back. 